Okay, today we're going to talk about three-dimensional systems. Now, of course, you can have a system with any dimension, but today we're going to talk about three dimensions specifically. So here's a picture of three planes, and they're intersecting. How are they intersecting? They're intersecting at this line right here, right down that middle. Okay, so that means that if you were to kind of solve this system, you would get an answer of a line. And then you'd say, okay, all the points on this line are points of intersection of these three planes. Okay, so that's one way that planes can intersect. Planes don't have to intersect at all, right? So here's an example of three planes that are parallel, okay? And those have no uh, points or lines of intersection. Okay, and then the third way is for planes to intersect at a very specific point. So here's an example of three planes that are intersecting at this one very specific point. You can see that right in the middle there, okay? So let's take a look at what happens if I wanna solve Okay, so here's my system. So my strategy here is that I know how to solve two variable systems, right? So in this case, I have three variables. So let's try and get rid of one of them, okay? So I'm gonna first start by picking two equations. Let's just say the first two. I'm gonna take those two equations and I'm gonna get rid of y. Now I could get rid of x or z if I wanted to, really doesn't matter. But since the y's are already opposite, um, I could do those, right? I could do the z's too if I wanted to because those are also already opposite, but let's just do the y's for now. So how do I eliminate those y's? I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3. Okay, now don't forget to distribute all the way through. So you're going to have 6x minus 3y minus 6z equals negative 9. Okay, and I'll rewrite the bottom one. So now, what happens when I add these equations together? Those y's cancel, and I'm left with 7x minus 5z equals negative 10. Okay, so I'm going to kind of save this because I'm going to use it again. So now I have to say to myself, right, well, I've got to come up with another equation that has only x and z in it. Okay, so maybe I eliminate y's again. Now, of course, I can't use the same two equations I used last time. So maybe we'll do something like, maybe we'll use, I don't know, the first one again and maybe the third one. Okay, so why don't we change the color here and we'll use the first and the third one. So if I do that, This works out well for me again because the y's are still, or one of the y's, the top one, has a coefficient of 1. So let's multiply the top one by negative 4. So we'll get negative 8x plus 4y plus 8z equals 12. And we'll rewrite the bottom one again. So now when I add these together, the y's will cancel again. Okay, so I'm left with negative 3x plus 11z equals 22. Okay, so now that I've gotten rid of y the first time and the second time, I'm going to take both of those equations that both only have x and z, and I'm going to solve those. So maybe we want to do some elimination in this case. So why don't we get rid of x? Of course, it doesn't matter. You can really get rid of whatever you want. But if I want to get rid of x, let's multiply the top equation by 3, and we'll multiply the bottom one by 7. So when I do that, I'm going to get 21x minus 15z equals negative 30. Then I'm going to get negative 21x plus 77z equals 154. Now when I add those together, my 21x's cancel. 77 minus 15, that's 62z equals 124. So then if I divide both sides by 62, I get that z equals 2. Okay, so now you're going to take your z, you're going to plug it back into one of the top two equations. So I don't know, let's use the first one. So we'll have 7x 
minus 5 times 2 equals negative 10. So I get 7x minus 10 equals negative 10. I add 10 to both sides, I get 7x equals 0, so x equals 0. Okay, so now I've got two of uh, my variables, I just have to get the third one. Remember that the third one's y. So now I know that x equals 0 and z equals 2. So we're going to pick an equation from the original, just like we always do before. It doesn't really matter which one, so let's just use the first one we had. So we had 2x minus y minus 2z equals negative 3. So I'll plug in my x, and I'll plug in my z, and I'll solve. So I get negative y minus 4 equals negative 3. So negative y equals 1, so y equals negative 1. Okay, so your solution is going to be the point 0, comma, negative 1, comma, 2. Okay, everyone, good luck.